Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Look at that, got even a green light on here. Um, I don't know if you guys watch Ed's channel. I got a spare sticker here, there you go. Um, Rusty Resurrections. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on. He's got an F100 there, Volkswagens, he's got a 200S. He's got a cool garage, lives in a cool place. He's not far out of Utica. And I don't know if you guys remember, there was a bike sitting right there that finally moved to a good place. And here it sits. Um, I got this from Ed as part of a deal. And I did a bunch of troubleshooting on it. And I stopped when I discovered that I had an open circuit for the pulse generator. First time I've ever seen that. Um, so, and that's, that's where I stopped the work on it. And given that I'm working on another TRX 250, same engine basically, um, this guy, I wanted to, yeah, see it's all covered up, um, I wanted to get back to this one and see what's going on with the engine. Um, should I be bringing the engine back to life? Is it a parts donor? What's, what's the story, right? And even to go further than that, um, what bikes do I want to put together again and what I don't want to put together? Uh, just quickly, the story on this, I picked it up the first week of May, and where Ed lives, not far from Utica, the first weekend of May, it was snowing. We were freezing our tails off up there. Uh, somebody um, put a different front end on this thing. I'm told it's from a 250R. This thing was used for racing. Um, and here, here it sits. Now, um, obviously, I've taken it apart. But before I did, I did a quick compression check on it. And this has been sagging down a little bit, but it came in like 265, 270, so it's got good compression, it's got no leak by on the valves. The top end of the engine is probably in really pretty nice shape. So given all of that, I said, you know what, let me take a look, let me give the, um, the, uh, um, pulse generator a sniff on this thing to see what's going on did something tragic happen in here right and uh i mean this is all in nice shape right um when they're nice not in nice shape me sliding my finger around like this my finger would be cut and bleeding okay it's oily but it's not cut and bleeding so that's a that's a very good thing anyhow so i pulled I pulled the cover off, and this is your typical stator. And by the way, for most bikes, this is what you're looking at here. All these little coils, what they do is they charge the battery. See the three yellow wires? These are for each phase of, um, of your alternator, so to speak. This is a three-phase system, right? One, two, three. And this one with the black tape on it, what this does is this powers your CDI. This thing has an AC CDI. Right? Three yellow wires come out right here. And they go to your, um, your uh, um, regulator. And these other wires, right? These guys... Um, you got a green, double green, that's ground, right, ground, um, also one side of the, um, power for your pulse generator, your stator, your AC, and that's this wire right here, and then you got the blue and white, and the blue and white goes to here, um, and just quickly, I'm going to show you, because I got to get the meter off to show you what I'm up to, um, I got the meter hooked directly to the pulse generator, and they typically come in three and a quarter, 350 ohms. But my big surprise was somebody put Quick Connects. I've never seen this before on the um, 
on the pulse generator, right, you can see your blue and yellow, and this here, right, green and white, ground. Um, I've, I've literally never seen this before. Um, they do look like Honda connectors. Um, and what I did is I pulled the connector, I pulled these apart and hooked the meter directly to the pulse generator and the pulse generator is fine. They were open at the connector. So, um, generally speaking, having connectors in an oil bath, not a good idea. Um, just, just really just not a good idea. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these connectors off and solder them on. I mean, and this looks like it was made like this. I, I think this kind of looks like somewhat like Honda work, right? Um, so I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to solder them up. And they have that um, liquid tape stuff. And I'm going to make them continuous with that. This, believe it or not, it, this is kind of the... I've I've never I've never seen this before. Maybe it was just one year or just a, a few months within a year that they they did this kind of stuff. Maybe some of you guys will tell me, "Oh no, no, I've seen that a dozen times." That's cool, but I've I've not seen a connector on the inside like this. I've worked on a lot of Hondas. I've never seen it. I have seen it where one side of this guy is ground and the other side has a push a slide on I've seen that um, but I've I've not I've not seen them um, like like this and typically the one that pushes on that slides on normally you have um, your your stator and generating all your power on the inside and then there's a little magnet on the outside of the flywheel and uh, well, no matter what, though, you're going to be in oil. But, yeah, normally I see the push-on guys are not in the oil bath. Normally, they, everything's out. you got a shaft coming out, an oil seal, and ev everything's on the outside. I've, I've, I've never seen connections in oil before. Um, whatever engineer at Honda that came up with this, they, they, they must have shot him. Yeah, this bike is, if I'm recalling, it's an 85. It looks like the old version um, stator. What year is this rig? Yeah, it's an 85. And it must be an early 85 because um, that, that looks like the old version of the uh, flywheel. I think they've updated from that but even as the old version I've never I've never seen connectors in oil before this is a first for me so anyway we finished troubleshooting it and that means um, once I put it all back together again I could probably get this thing fire it up and uh, and running um, it's going to be a bear to get this cover back on you guys could see it was kind of scraping on the way off really the right way to do it is to take the bolts out of the engine um, the way I had to do it is I kind of had to lift this up right which gave me a little more play for getting things loose um, I'm I'm probably going to have to loosen the engine, move it up, put the cover back on, and move it back down. I've lost... Looks like the external gasket is still good. I don't think I've lost any of it. I got a little bit of the gasket that runs along here that looks like it peeled up. But I don't think that's all that big a deal. Right? What do I care if this gasket is no good? It's really just the external gasket. And that looks like it's still good all the way around. So I'm probably, until I figure out what kind of shape this rig is in, I'm probably not going to change that gasket. I'm just going to smash it on. Um, so there we are. Troubleshooting 
an open pulse generator on a um, on a 250SX, which is the same engine as the TRX 250 and the 250ES. Um, I've seen you guys do this before, where you kind of draw a picture and put the bolts where they're supposed to go. Um, this is the first time I'm doing it, but having had to put several of these back together again, it always seems as if um, there's one screw hole that's a quarter of an inch more shallow than the others. So as you're smashing all the bolts together, and there's only one bolt that's a quarter inch shorter than all the others. Um, the others are more in common. So, um, and that's the bolt that, of course, ends in the sh ends up in the short one. And then you got to take all the bolts out again to find the one that's a quarter inch shorter, so that they'll all tighten up. So this time I decided to go that way. Uh, Captain Jerk gave me an engine with the bolts all pushed into foam, um, which is kind of where I've seen it. I've seen Musty One do it, do that uh, with cardboard when he took apart a transmission, which literally I think had half the bolts known to man in it. Um, so when he took it apart, he, he arranged them in cardboard like that, and it worked out good for him. So I've seen it a couple of times, and probably more more than just you, those two guys do it. I've probably seen it elsewhere also. I just happen to be remembering those two. So, um, see, I watch your videos, guys. I'm not, I'm, I'm not just out, out here making this stuff up. Um, so I decided to try it, and I think... I think it's a really good idea. By the way, this bike, the front tire took air, which I'm happy about, um, because I don't have a million of these floating around. The front bars are good. They're really in nice shape. Notice there's a front boot here. Um, currently, the rear end is kind of um, stiff on this, and I'm not quite sure. It's probably from sitting around. What I'm going to do is get the, uh, get the wheels off and uh try to try to loosen it up and put a different different set of uh tires on here so that this puppy and once again get the rear end loosened up so this puppy will actually roll um it might be a weird thing to say considering how bad this looks in its current configuration but uh this thing could actually be a running riding bike in a fairly short order um which i'm sure my buddy Ed would like to see again, right? All of us like to see our projects move again. Even on the rear end, um, a lot of times if you just loosen these things and bang this out, that'll loosen the brake up and that'll free things up. Yeah, that's that's pretty stiff. It, this thing doesn't look like it's been a swimmer and it's got everything intact, so I'm not... I'm not thinking that it got waterlogged and seized up. It probably probably got seized up where the brake is and it probably got that from sitting around I um Ed put a comment in that this thing sat around uh for years at his place before I ended up with it and then you guys saw it sat out here for um I don't know eight eight months now or whatever so I'm sure that didn't loosen the rear end up all right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. I want you all to keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and please, please get out there and enjoy all your days. Don't let any time get by you. Make sure you have fun, you know. Have a few laughs. Have a few beers. Have some fun. Once again, folks, thanks for watching and commenting and subscribing. Bye now.